So now in this video, we're just going to look at this little integrated circuit here. It is pretty straightforward. I got it from this integrated circuit kit. Just came in the mail today. It was about $15. There is a larger version that costs about $30 that has uh, more parts and then twice as many parts. So this has 75. That one has 150. This one is out of stock right now. And then the larger one, it's not going to have stock until the 9th according to Amazon. So I don't know if there's other sellers that have it that also have uh, quick shipping. But it uh, seems like they're out of order right now. But in uh, any case, I'm going to go over. There's a lot of uh, common components here that uh, I've used in other videos. And uh, so I think this is a good buy for a first integrated circuit kit if you don't have any. So in any case, we have an anode and a cathode on one side. So there's a diode that emits some kind of light. On the right, we have the collector and emitter. This is a transistor that responds to that light. It does not conduct until it receives that light. So of course, we can't see that light. I have an LED here, which will light up. I'll turn the uh, power supply on. The LED is not lit right now. So that is the right side. We have a separate power supply over here powering this rail. This power supply is only powering that rail. Usually I use these jumpers to power both of them, but I moved them. So now I turned on my five volt power supply with the resistor to a limit current and 330 ohm resistor, 330 ohm resistor. We're dealing with five volts. So there you can see that the LED is on, but only when we give it a signal right there. So since there is light that is controlling how the transistor goes instead of current or something, it takes a whole lot of voltage. I think well over a thousand volts before it was short across there. So it isolates these two circuits. We're using five volts there. We don't have to use five volts here. We can go up to six, seven, eight, and I think nine is probably the maximum for the 330 ohm resistor. So I'll pluck that. And I do have a one kilo ohm. There we go. That I will attach. And uh, then we can go with a higher voltage. Turn that on. So there you can see five. So probably about 14 is where we would want to max out with that one. So we can use a higher voltage. That's the main takeaway. The voltages do not interact with each other. And uh, so you can use one voltage on one side and then another voltage on the other side. So this is a 330 ohm resistor. As I said before, I'll pluck uh, that one and then grab this one. And I haven't found something that said uh, how much current you should have going through here, even if you need a protective resistor. I don't think it has an internal protective resistor, but I don't know for sure. So this is something to study uh, later. So this is a 330 ohm resistor. We're getting about 13, probably just a spec less than 13 milliamps of current. This is a one kilo ohm resistor. So three times the resistance. We'll get about a third of the current. And you can see current went down. So it's not getting a bright enough light to uh, saturate, especially with the one kilo ohm. I think it probably is with the 330, but I could be wrong. I just had 330 laying around. Otherwise I would have grabbed a 220. But in case, the main takeaway is this side produces a light, that side receives a light to start conducting. And uh, if there's no light, I'll turn the uh, power off here. So there's no current flow, no light internally. There's no current flow on this side. It's a light dependent switch on the inside of the component. You provide a current though. So you need a small current. You can control a larger current. So hope that all made sense. I will see you in the next video.